Hi folks, this is Paul from the Nikola Tesla Research and Development Centre. Today we have a miniature Tesla bulb. This was blown by a UK glass blower called Russ. It's a collaboration between myself, Dave Porter, who's a, a US glass blower, Aaron Murakami, Eric Dollard, and a number of uh, people in the UK. Here we have just a piece of aluminium uh, rolled into a tube with a little bit of sellotape on it. Just got a magnifier there holding, holding that HV wire. These two white wires here are HV wires. This is called a Minimax 30. It's a 3 kilovolt open circuit uh, at 20 milliamps. Under load, it's 2 kilovolt at 10 milliamps. Uh, you can purchase this from a website called amazingone.com in USA. It is an amazing website. They sell a lot of high voltage stuff. Uh, very out there. If you haven't seen it before, you've got to check it out. Um, this can be bought for $19.95, uh, so $20. Uh, you can get a US wall adapter for just under $10 and it outputs uh, 30, it's a 30 kilohertz, um, 2 kilo, kilovolt, so that's 2000 volts and it's actually on now, so if I touch that on there, and if, you, if you get a, if you get one of this, it's not, it's not particularly it's not particularly nice, but um, it's nothing like getting chucked off the wall. Um, so just to show you, if I touch that on the on the foil, I'll bring that up closer to the camera. It's a bit of a strange tingling sensation, actually. I haven't done that for a while. So a little bit closer. I'm actually holding the aluminium foil. So I can feel that slightly. But yeah, it's only 2,000 volts. <laughs> so, um, you can get a, um, a four-stage multiplier called a CH20 uh, that will take it up to 20,000 volts at one milliamp. Or you can get a CH30, which is an eight-stage multiplier, which will take it up to 30 kilovolts at 0.5 milliamps and uh, they're, they're all reasonably cheap from the same website. Um, the Tesla bulbs, we are looking to do some testing on these and uh, show what they're capable of. You've got two envelopes, you've got the outer envelope um, which is ultra high vacuum, you've got the inner bulb in the middle um, which is basically uh, ultra high vacuum and then it's backfilled with the conducting gas I and mean, that could be nitrogen, helium, neon, um, argon, xenon, the choice is yours. I mean the, the jury's out on um, what the best conducting gas is. I mean Tesla constantly talks about nitrogen in a lot of his work so um, this one is uh, backfilled with nitrogen um, to about 25% um, um, atmosphere. So, with let, let's say let's say 100% was full vacuum, and um, this is like 20 about 25%, which is the fill pressure that's used for neons. So it's just it was just a starting point for the US glass blower. Sorry for the English glass blower. Um, the US glass blower, Dave Porter, did um, quite a different um, uh, fill pressure, which was actually um, more like 90 something, uh, 90, 93 um, percent vacuum still. So quite a different um, fill pressures and we've still got some really, really interesting results. I mean, Eric Dollard said he'd never never seen anything like that before. Uh, bear in mind there's no conductor in this bulb whatsoever. 
So the point of the aluminium tube is to slide over there and um, act as um, an inductive pickup. So that's what it looks like. So I'll just show you what this looks like with the light on and then I'll turn the light off. So I'm just going to show you, I can put this anywhere near this, it won't, it won't, it won't do anything. And me just doing that, Ooh, I've got a little bit of a shock then. Oops, that I wasn't expecting. And uh, you can see that. I really don't want to break it yet. <laughs> so, I mean, that is um, the beauty about what these bulbs are all about is it's got no conducting filament in it. So there's nothing to burn out. So unless you smash this bulb, the theory is it would last forever. And um, how much light that these bulbs can put out. I mean, Tesla was making some pretty bold claims like daylight spectrum and um, that you can keep increasing the voltage and the frequency and it will get brighter and brighter. So we're not going to get too far with just um, two, 2,000 volts, but it's a starting point and a safe starting point for anyone that wants to experiment with these. Um, we're looking to sell these at £100 each uh, plus £25 shipping and um, that's to anywhere in the world and uh, Tesla was uh, wrote in his, in his lighting pattern that both frequency and potential may be enormously increased above the 15 to 20,000 uh, per second frequency and a voltage of about 20,000 volts so we're, we're well under that I and mean, he did say fairly good results by a frequency as low as 15 to 20,000 per second and a voltage of about 20,000 volts. So, yeah, the jury's out on um, how many lumens this can put out at what voltage. Um, this is still uh, very much in its infancy on testing. Um, Dave Porter, Eric Dollard and Aaron Murakami did some uh, basic tests with Eric's new setup and According to Tesla, you're supposed to run these bulbs for a, a period of time, um, which could be minutes, hours, uh, or days, um, to bring it to, it to its full potential. And um, that hasn't been done yet, so um, we're going to do some more testing on this, and uh, hopefully they'll do some more testing over in the USA as well. So we've got two, two teams uh, on this. So for now, I'm just going to slide slide that in there and pop it down I'm just I'm just tickling that now with the but because it's so light you can't see anything so what I'm going to do I'm just going to go and switch off the lights and uh, then come back the only other side of the room. So bear in mind, as I said, this is only, um, we're above the frequencies that Tesla recommended as a minimum, minimum 15 to 20, so we're at 30, 30 kilohertz, but we're well under voltage by the fact, you know, um, we're at 2,000 2, volts where he's recommending fairly good results at 20,000 volts. So don't expect any magic. But the other thing is as well, is Tesla also said that for this type of bulb in particular, that disruptive discharge shouldn't be used. So, I mean, this is this Minimax here. This is like the perfect um, base entry level um, for testing these bulbs and then adding the uh, the four stage or the eight stage multiplier uh, to take you up to 20 or 30,000 um, volts. So you can see that glowing then. And that's not 
that's not the that's not the aluminium either if I take the tube off and put that there put the tube there and I think put that there oh there's actually there's a little bit of something there. was that because it was by the aluminium a little glow on the outside can you see that So you can see that this, the aluminium tube is definitely affecting it. Now, in the 1892 lecture that this bulb was uh, revealed in, um, Tesla actually recommends tin, so tin foil isn't tin foil anymore, it's aluminium foil, isn't it? So I've ordered some tin foil, sorry, I've ordered some tin sheet. 99.9% .9 tin because he doesn't say any other metal he says tin and the thing is with tin is it's paramagnetic aluminium is too but he didn't say aluminium he said tin so let's get some tin I believe replication should be what they they say and then you can change the variables once you've mastered that So it would be interesting to see, if I leave this connected for like a few hours, how bright it will get with just this 2000 volts. So I'm going to stop the video now and um, leave this connected for a little bit and uh, see, see where we're at. Okay, we're back again and uh, we've had it connected for a little while now, we've actually tucked took that under there so it, it can't easily come out and then just a couple of things I wanted to show you um, the first one is just bringing this closer doesn't really influence anything at all just put that in there there's little, there's little burns and you can see the, the light gets weaker so if I earth that doesn't do anything. If I touch that, it doesn't do anything. If I touch that, yeah, I get a little burn. <laughs> and uh, I think this is the most in interesting one that I'm about to show you, which is something that Tesla actually talks about in the lecture. And although I don't think we've got the voltage yet to have the uh, the, the middle um, envelope glowing uh, like Eric Dollard and Dave Porter and Aaron Murakami did. Uh, they, I think they were using much higher voltage. I'm not actually sure what voltage the tester call was that they built. Um, I think it was running in the megahertz frequency range as well. Um, some pretty sophisticated uh, electronics. So I'm just going to move that away because there's quite a bit of um, quite a bit of metal there that's magnetic. So got this, it's an N42 70mm uh, OD by 30mm ID by 10mm thick neodymium magnet and um, Tesla wrote in the lecture that um, it was affected um, by um, magnetism and he also did an article um, called Tesla bulbs in the electrical experimenter, I think it was in 1919. And if I put this magnet near the bulb, watch what happens. So if I spin the magnet, Which is exactly what Tesla said in the article. It would, it would. Uh, it's the rotating brush. And just to show you, that's not a shadow or anything. So roll it in.
Now, Tesla said this bulb was the most sensitive detector that he'd ever, that he'd ever found, uh, more sensitive than the Audion, um, which was used in, in uh, radio. And another thing that I found out is if I grab it, it gets brighter. One thing I've not tried, I've just thought of, is if I hold it, I can bend. Bend the, bend the light inside the magnet. So the next, the next phase for testing is to up the voltage, uh, play around the frequency, and I think one of the biggest things that's missing from um, the Tesla coil, because um, the Mini Max is essentially a Tesla coil. Um, if you look at the earlier. Um, high voltage transmission pattern, both the coils are uh, connected and, uh, and, and they're earthed. And then if you look at the, the wireless transmission pattern that has this bulb as the, um, it, the bulb is the terminal, it's, it's a secret that's been, uh, it, it's hidden in plain sight really. If you, if you read the, True wireless um, article. It's plain as a nose on your face. Um, in the actual wireless transmission pattern, it doesn't show it in the diagram, but it's got it in the text. So if you've not spotted that, have a look at British Patent two four four two one. Um, I need to read read both of the US patents to see if it's in there, but it's definitely in the British patent. And I think that's one of the things that's missed. And I did an experiment years and years ago. When I was messing around with high voltage lighting circuits, um, not the same as this, uh, just just regular off the shelf bulbs, and um, I connected a car ignition coil uh, negative to to ground, and um, whoa, I had a, um, a <laughs> you see you see that one that there when that jumps to the, to the magnet. I had one about this long, Ooh, can't see my fingers, about this long and it was thick, a thick blue arc and it, and it cracked like lightning and it, it scared the absolute crap out of me. And that came out of the ground. Um, I, what I'd created is an iron pump uh, and I was pumping negative ions out of the ground into the circuit and um, so I'd, I'd basically got lightning out of the ground. It was absolutely scared the crap out of me. It woke up my, woke up the mother and my children, and um, I, st I actually got quite scared with playing with uh, this sort of circuit. Uh, other than that, I got shocked by um, xenon. If you're playing with xenon and high voltage, high frequency circuits, I'd be super, super careful and observe all the the um, high voltage. Um, safety precautions because that is that is the thing that it, it literally felt like i'd i mean this is that's nothing i mean i literally lost my arm for half a day with just a very similar circuit to this but the bulb had got zen on it so just be aware of that so that, that it seems that the higher you go up the the scale the, the more dangerous the gases can be for 
um, playing with. So, yeah, interesting, isn't it? Right, I think that's it for today. We need more voltage, adjustable frequency, and an earth ground in the circuit. And ultimately, I would love to build a replication of Tesla's 8 foot by 8 foot pancake coil, which he claimed in the 1890s was his most prized possession in his lab. And uh, from what I can tell, this was, this was the middle part of it, and this was the terminal. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Catch you later, guys. Thanks for listening.